so you wanted me to play an arcane dexterity bleed build on my next playthrough. I made it, but decided to play it with a little twist, honestly taking me out of my comfort zone, using a thrusting weapon instead of my favorite slash and smash playstyle. This late game ended up being pretty challenging because of the different types of movesets and the Ash of War double mechanic that acts as a dodge and a pretty OP counterattack which you need to time both really well to be efficient and proc that bleed really quick to destroy his enemies faster and faster. If it bleeds, we can kill it. I will let you know how to get the weapon, how it works, and how to set up the build to poke to death all your enemies, and also have a breath of fresh air with this different playstyle while we all wait for the DLC. This is Balrox, the bleed train is back again. Game on. So guys, I won't lie to you. This playthrough was a little challenging and not because of the build was underpowered. On the contrary, the build is very powerful if played right. The tricky part was to play effectively with the thrusting weapon and its touch of war. The weapon I'm using with this arcane dexterity build is the Bloody Hellas. It's a heavy thrusting weapon with the 81 bloodlust buildup that at max level with this build would get to 102. It scales B with Arcane and C with Dexterity, although the scaling and bleed buildup is affected by Arcane alone, so you can even make an Arcane Strength build with this weapon. You can find this weapon pretty much mid-game, inside a chest after defeating a Sangin Noble mini-boss inside an underground entrance at the Blood Ruins in the northwest part of Altus Plateau. So every attack with the Bloody Hellis can stagger enemies, so use this to your advantage. But the greatest part of this weapon is the weapon art called Dynast Finesse. When it's activated, the character will do a backstepping dodge. If you follow up with the right trigger, it will do a super powerful forward thrust, getting back to your initial distance. So if you are at weapons distance of the enemy, this thrust attack will surely hit your target. And if you follow that with an additional right trigger, it will do a two hit combo attack. If you manage to hit those three attacks, it will deal great damage and also probably activate in bleed. A good tip that comes from the PvP use of this weapon is that if you are not using the target locking, you can redirect your attack after the initial dodge by moving your direction forward the way you want to attack while hitting that right trigger to initiate the counterattack. While two-handed this weapon, the movesets are powerful but not meant to hit several enemies at a time. It only works best for single target, since all the moves are pokes, pokes, and yes, pokes. So you got the left bump attack that will poke away, and at the end of the fifth poke, the animation will take a bit more time to recover. You got your charge right trigger attack, your heavy jump attack, and your light jump attack that can work as a combo opener, your running light attack, and your running heavy attack that can work as combo opener as well your step back thrust attack and your roll back upper thrust attack. As you can see, your thrust and the Dynas finesse attack are very powerful, but they use a lot of stamina. So you will need some help with that, with talismans and physique flask. The way I play this build is always starting with a jump attack or a running attack. And instead of regular rolls, I try to use the Ash of War dodge and then counter attack with the three hit combo that will do a lot of damage with the bleed proc. It works wonder with most of the enemies, but faster ones are sometimes difficult and you will miss the Ash of War counterattack. So regular thrust attacks will be your best option. As secondary weapons, I'm using a dagger with the Golden Vow Ash of War and the Dragon Communion Seal to use a little set of incantations that support this build. So guys, if you find this build helpful so far, uh, please give this video a like so that YouTube likes me and help this channel grow. If you don't want to miss any more of my videos, uh, please consider subscribing. I appreciate and thank you all. So as you know, I like to play in style. So for this build, I decided to play with the three sentinel armor, except the helmet that I'm using the white mask. So you can increase your attack power by 10% for 20 seconds once bleed has been activated on the enemy. It's golden look is a great pair with the bloody hellis uh, because of that golden handle that the weapon has. If you play with this weapon, please comment down below what drip are you using. The first talisman is the Shard of Alexander that will increase the attack power of Dynas Finesse by 15%. Next is the Green Turtle Talisman that will help with the stamina recovery speed. 
Remember that I mentioned earlier that the Bloody Helis attacks eats your stamina so fast that you need items to help recover you faster. Next talisman is the Millicent Prosthesis uh, to boost your dexterity by 5 and raise your attack power with successive attacks. If you don't have this talisman, you can switch it to the Rotten Wing Sword Insignia or the Winged Sword Insignia. Or if you want more defense, uh, the Dragon Crest Grey Shield Talisman because sometimes you'll find yourself exchanging damage with the enemy. And last is the Lord of Blood Exaltation that will increase the attack power by 20% for 20 seconds when you activate Bleed on the enemy. For the Physique Flask, I'm using the Dexterity Knot Crystal Tier to boost Dexterity by 20 for 3 minutes, and the Green Burst Crystal Tier to increase Stamina Recovery Speed by 15 per second for 3 minutes. The incantations that I have for this build are to cover the holes that it might have, like an opening mid-range spell or a AoE attack to handle swarms or groups of enemies. First is a spell that can be used to start engaging from mid-range and to help with the bleed buildup, and that is Swarm of Flies. Now, although it was nerfed in patch 1.04, it still does physical and small magic damage that is always welcome when chipping away health from enemies and bosses at mid-range. Another mid-range incantation that you can use is the Pest Threads. Now, the last offensive incantation is the Blood Boon that will launch Blood Flame in front of the caster and will send that area aflame, afflicting nearby enemies. It's pretty good when dealing with group of enemies if you need it. The last incantation is the always present Flame Ground Restraint to buff up before any tough enemies or boss fights. If you're making this build from scratch, the class I would recommend using is the Bandit, a very good amount of Arcane mixed with Dexterity. Or maybe a Samurai since you start with the Uchigatana and can be your bleed weapon until you reach mid and late game, with that you can set up this build. The character I'm using is a level 200 Vagabond, so the attributes might differ from you if you're using a different class. The point spread for attributes are as follows, spending the most point in Arcane, Vigor and Dexterity. So I got Vigor at 60, Mine at 24. Not much Mine is needed since the AoE Dynas Finesse uses very little FP. Endurance at 30, to be able to use that heavy armor and to have most stamina possible since the thrust attacks from the Bloody Hellis spend a lot of stamina. Strength at 16, just to get to the Bloody Hellis requirements. Dexterity at 50, Intelligence at 9, no points here ever. Faith at 15, just to be able to cast Flame Grand Strength. And Arcane at 80. Although I'm not a fan of thrust weapons and Bloody Hellis is mainly a PvP weapon because of its single target, you know, features. Uh, this build showed me that it can be very, very powerful in PvE uh, when mastering the move sets and timing correctly your dodge and counter attack with the Dynas Finesse as a war. Adding more bleed buildup makes it even more powerful and fun for late game and NG+. So I recommend you give this build a try on your next playthrough. It won't disappoint. This build is not intended to be a main max perfect build. If you have some improvements in mind or have played with a similar build, please post your findings down below in the comments. I'm very curious of what you came up with. So guys, if you want to support the channel, please give this video a like. That will mean a lot to me and it will help the channel grow. And if you're new, please consider subscribing if you like to check out more Elden Ring content. And we're close to the DLC launch, so it's very exciting times. I appreciate your time and appreciate you for clicking on this video. And be sure to check more bleed videos in my Elden Ring bleed build playlist. So thank you again, be safe, and see you on the next one. Ciao!